A town is full of buildings, some tall, some short, some wide, and some narrow. The buildings are flats and houses and factories and shops. They're built in streets. The streets have cars and buses and lorries driving along them. The cars and buses and the streets are full of people. In fact, there are a lot of people in a town. Do you live in a town? Mary, Mungo, and Midge live in this town. They live with Mary's mother and father in this tall block of flats. They live right at the top. There are eight flats built on top of each other. Mary, Mungo and Midge live in the flat with the flowers growing in the window box. There's Mary. There's Mungo. And there's Midge. Mary, Mungo and Midge have a large sunny room to play in. A room full of games, picture books and toys. Midge is so busy driving Mary's toy car that he doesn't know Mary is waiting for him with her parents in their car. They're all going to the seaside for the day. We must go down, Midge. They're waiting for us. But, but we can't go till I've played my flute. I only know one tune, but... Oh, no, you don't, Midge. Not this time. Come along. As they live in a flat right at the top of the building, Mungo and Midge go down to the street by lift. They have a special way of doing it. If Mungo doesn't bring Midge soon, I'm going without both of them. We must remember to make sure the lift door is shut. But as usual, Midge was in too much of a hurry. He was already in the car. Oh, there you are, Midge. Come on, Mungo. We're waiting for you now. Mungo just had time to get in the car before... Mary's father drove off. At last, they were on their way to the seaside. Through the park. Through the town. Then on through the country until they got to the seaside. Midge jumped out of the car. He had never been to the sea before, and he had never seen so much water in all his life. The sand was yellow, and the sea was blue. There were a lot of small waves rolling in and out. Midge watched a boat go by. Then he went down to the beach. There were a lot of people on the sand. Some were lying out sunbathing. Some were sitting in deck chairs, reading or sleeping. Mary and Mungo were already playing with the sand. Mary was filling her bucket with sand. And Mungo was helping. He was digging up more sand for her to put into the bucket. When the bucket was full of sand, Mary tipped it upside down. Then when she took off the bucket, she'd made a sand castle. There! Look what I've made! I'm the king of the castle! Whoops! Silly mouse! Never mind, Mary. I'll help you build another castle. Midge tried to make a castle too. He filled his bucket with sand. But the bucket was too small and his castle fell down. Midge saw some shells in the sand. He picked up two and balanced one on each paw.
Then he watched some people swimming and playing with a ball in the water. There was a dog barking at the sea. And some seagulls flying about. Midge ran across the beach and in between the people. He went back to the car and looked along the seafront. He saw a little tower with a clock on it and a telephone box and a cafe with a picture of a black cat outside, a toy shop full of things for the beach, a crane in the distance and a fairground. Then he saw a letterbox and a man selling balloons. Midge thought it was all very interesting. He didn't know there were so many things at the seaside. He saw Mary having an ice cream. Then he thought he'd go back to the beach to find Mungo. But it was so warm and sunny that Mungo had fallen fast asleep beside the sandcastle that he and Mary had made. I think I'll play my flute. Now. Not when I'm trying to sleep, Midge. I'll look after your flute, if you don't mind. No, I haven't got anything to do. You can play at being king of the castle, Midge. Very quietly. Oh, all right. Now, perhaps I can have some peace and quiet. I'm the king of the castle. Get down, you dirty rascal. Mungo went back to sleep. He looked so comfortable and it was so warm and sunny that Midge lay down on his back on top of the sand castle. Very soon he went to sleep too. And while he was asleep, he had a dream. He dreamt that he was standing on the shore watching Mungo swimming away out to sea with Midge's flute in his mouth. Stop, Mungo! Come back! But Mungo didn't answer. And suddenly Midge dreamt that he was in Mary's toy boat, sailing after Mungo. Ahead of him, he saw a red boat coming towards him. Midge sailed up to it to see if Mungo was hiding in it. But when he got to the boat, it changed into a letterbox. Midge could hear barking. Perhaps Mungo's inside, he thought. So he jumped in. Down and down he fell and landed not among the letters, but in the clock shop. At one end of the shop, he thought he saw Mungo. But when he ran to catch him, Mungo disappeared again. So Midge went up to the cuckoo clock and asked, Please, cuckoo, have you seen my dog anywhere? But then the cuckoo clock changed into a black cat. And in his dream, Midge saw that there were lots and lots of black cats. Midge doesn't like cats very much, so he was rather glad when the last black cat suddenly changed into a red telephone box with Mungo inside. Mungo seemed to be making a telephone call, but when Midge ran up to him, the telephone box changed into the doll's house in the toy shop. And now in his dream, Midge thought he could hear Mungo snoring. He went inside, ran up the stairs of the doll's house and looked into the bedroom. There was Mungo, fast asleep in bed. Midge went to wake him up, but when he got to the bed, it changed into a car in a garage. Midge looked round and saw Mungo again, only this time he was being lifted up on the car lift. Come down, Mungo. I want my flute. But the car lift changed into the tray of a crane. Midge saw Mungo getting further and further away as the crane pulled him up into the air. Now I shall never get my flute back, thought Midge. But just then, he saw a toy balloon floating towards him. 
Perhaps that balloon will take me up to Mungo, thought Midge. And a moment later, he was going up and up and up and up. The crane didn't seem to be there anymore. The balloon carried him over some trees and then down, down, down onto a fairground. Midge looked around for Mungo, but Mungo wasn't on the swings and he wasn't on the roundabouts. Then Midge looked at the bumper cars and there was Mungo riding in a bumper car. He had Midge's flute with him. Midge jumped into another car and started to chase Mungo. Then he noticed that all the other bumper cars had disappeared. He was in a toy bumper car, driving round the playroom floor. Careful, Midge. Look out for that chair. Watch out for that toy lorry, Midge. The bump woke Midge up. He was still on the sandcastle. He'd been dreaming all the time. And there was Mungo with his flute. Then Midge looked again. There was water all round his castle. The sea had come in while he'd been asleep, and now he was on an island all by himself. Mungo! Help, Mungo! Rescue me, please! I'm stranded on the sandcastle and I can't swim! All right. Stay there. I'll rescue you. Oh, thank you, Mungo. We can use Mary's spade as a bridge. There you are. Walk across it, Midge. Come on. That's right. Careful. Don't fall in the water, Midge. There. I'm safe. Hello, Mary. Are you all right, Midge? Did you have to rescue him, Mungo? Yes, but I wouldn't have had to if Midge could swim. Mm, yes, well, uh, thank you, Mungo. And, uh... Thank you for looking after my flute for me. I think I'll play a tune. Not now. There isn't time. Wait until we get home, Midge. Poor Midge. When they got home, the very first thing he did was to play his flute. But Mary was so tired that she went straight to bed and to sleep. She dreamt that she'd made a sandcastle big enough to live in. Mungo dreamt he had a bone, which suddenly changed into Mary's spade. And Midge went to sleep too. He dreamt he was playing a very, very big flute.